saying. So we need to de continually declare, declare and decree that great is the Lord, but also the Great Commission. That was the second one that God spoke to me about. And the third one the Lord was speaking to me about, He said, He said, there's a great falling away. There is coming this great falling away. And you can just you can just see it. First Timothy 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 1. Let's go to First Timothy. I'll take you to other scriptures there fairly soon, but I want us to go into First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, The Spirit clearly says that in the latter times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. You know, even when, when Jesus cast out all these demons, they, um, you know, Jesus, He was just there and all these demons just fled. These spirits, unclean spirits, they were just, they just, people were delivered. People were set free. These, so it says that some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Verse 2 says, Such, such teachings come through hypocritical lies. So what are we seeing is, what we are seeing right now is the enemy. We've got the Father of Truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And so we've got the Father of lies, which is, which is Satan himself. And that spirit is in action right now. It's, in, it's, it's moving right across globally right now. And there are Christians that have just been with the Lord for so many years. But all of a sudden, it's like the spirit, this lying spirit or this deceptive spirit has entered their, their hearts. And, uh, you know, because it talks about teachers. Those who teach will be judged strictly. So we need to be very cautious uh, of things that I say, things that I, how we, you and I pray, and things that we, we teach those, that it comes back to foundations, to the true foundations there of the Lord. It says, some teachings come through hypocritical lies. His conscience have been as seared as with a hot iron. And who knows when you a hot iron, you don't want to be burnt when you're ironing in clothes. You don't want to be burnt with a hot iron because it can leave you with a, a a very skin painful mark there on you. And uh, they they forbid people and, and it goes on. But it says um goes on. For everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected. It is to be received with thanksgiving because it is consecrated by the word of God and, and prayer. And uh, so when I was going through a lot of these things, God said, what we're seeing happening right now globally is that uh, Barbara shared on a spirit, a lying spirit, where, um, and Deborah read out of the scripture there out of Matthew, where it says that the, in the end times, in these days, there will be those with a spirit of falseness that are on the rise. And it talks about those of of uh, false apostles, false teachers, those who are um, speaking of wrongness. And uh, so what we're seeing is, uh, interestingly, many of you have received, when Barbara sent out the word, the Lord gave her the word about uh, the falseness of um, uh, prophets speaking wrong things. The spirit of deception has come upon them. And uh, so, I want us to go to the book there of Hebrews, chapter 6, 4 and 6, it says, It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the, the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and, of, and the powers of the coming age. And who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss they are crucifying the Son of God all over again. And subjecting Him 
to public disgrace. So when the Lord said what's happening, we've got three great things that we need to declare. And from the body of Christ, we need to say, continue to say how great is the Lord. Continually pray for the great commission that there will be souls that will come in to the kingdom of God. Because what we're seeing is clouds of darkness. Clouds of darkness that are coming over cities. Clouds of darkness that are coming over nations. But we know that as Isaiah says, Arise, shine, for the light has come. The true light of the world is coming. And when he, he, he is here, but there are powers of darkness that, that are there that need to be shifted away of the mindsets. In Hebrews 3, chapter 3, verse 12 to 19, it says this, See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily as, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. And that was the same spirit that deceived um, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. When that cunning serpent was allowed to just have its way in the garden. And, uh, you know, those are the things that we're praying out over our homes when we're out in the garden. We need to just pray as you and I pray. God's holy protection, God's shield of armor, mum was, mum was talking about. The shield of faith, the whole armor of God. We want the whole armor of God. Praying in Ephesians uh, 91. That he that who dwelleth in the secret place shall abide in the cells of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge, He is my strength, my God, Him who I trust. In the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, it talks about this in 11.3. But I am afraid that as the, as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a, from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. So we need to keep those things that are that are not right out of the garden. Because when, when God has placed you and I, we need to make sure that uh, that the seeds that we've sown are falling into good ground, into good hearts, into good soil. And I pray that that spirit of deception is so, so important. We know that when those are turning to the Lord, even those for the very, very first time, that they get taught well. They get the Word of God just planted so deep into their spirit. So they know what from uh, wrong from, uh, to right. They know right to wrong. They have a discernment heart, a discernment spirit. So pray that in. Because as the book there of Matthew 24, 10 to 13, it says, Many will fall away and betray. And it, see, and it even says the elect. It says even the elect will be deceived. Even the elect? Yes. And that's why we need to make sure that our election in Christ is yes and amen. And we have to know that whatever happens, that God is seated upon the throne. And that your life and my life are in His hands. The book of Romans 11, 19 to 22, you can read it in your time. It says that those that have fallen, those that have fallen. And you know when someone has, has, has fall, fallen down on the ground. And uh, you know, you're there. You're there the, when you see someone falling down on the ground. You immediately will go and help them. And pick them up. Because that's the characters and the ways of the Lord. When someone has fallen, even fallen in, in, in sin. You know, God will send us out to those that are astray, those that are backslidden, and to turn them from the errors of their way so that they will come back to the Lord, that they will return to that first love. In 1 Timothy 4.16, it says to keep, keep a close watch. Keep a close watch. The other thing that the Lord spoke to me, what's happening right now, right now, he said, in the, mid, in the midst of these great things that he wants to do, but also the great falling away, pray that the salvation of souls, that those that are, that are lost, those who have been in the house of the Lord, that they will be restored back to him. That 
they will be restored back to the Lord. But the Lord said that, uh, as Matthew also talks about, a great distress, a great deception is in place also. And also great denial. When, remember when Peter, he, Peter himself, he denied the Lord and they reached the crowd three times. This is Peter that was following the Lord. He was one of the disciples walking closely with the Lord. And we know that spirit of denial came upon him. And so we need to just check our hearts as the body of Christ, as believers, because this is being recorded and we record things that's, that's there. I believe that we need to check our hearts. Those of us that are in this building, those that are, that are listening of this recording, to make sure that we come before the Lord with, a, with clean hands and, and a pure heart, preparing the way for the Maker, preparing the way for the Lord. But the Lord also spoke to me about this spirit that's in operation now. It's the spirit of apostasy. And you can, it's, it's the same thing where uh, that meaning defection, apostasia, O-P-O-S-T-A-S-I-A. -S when you break that word, word down, it says a post-Asia. So God was talking to not only the Pacific nations, but all of Asia, all of Mediterranean, all of the Arab Emirate nations that they too will come back and so that we will truly see the highway of the Lord of, of Egypt and Assyria and Israel coming and worshipping the Lord. But the Lord said, spoke to me about that spirit of apostasy and uh, it, has, it has also departure and like a revolt and a rebellious type spirit. And we know that, that the Bible talks about in the book of Kings it says that sin, uh, rebellion is, is, is the sin of witchcraft. And so we see the spirit operating. We see it operating. And uh, many leaders, many intercessors are just picking up what's happening. What we're seeing is the confrontation that Elijah had on Mount Carmel with the, uh, with the prophets of, of um, Asherah and, and Baal. We see that in, in operation. We see um, what's happening, that the, the, the Mount, Mount Carmel, we see the confrontation of that spirit happening with the Mount of Zion. You can just see it happening. And, uh, but we know that those falseness will come around, that will, will, um, will come down. This great falling talks, away, uh, talks about this man of sin, the son of perdition. And uh, we, we, you know, everything's in God's hand. No one knows when the Lord's going to come back. And, uh, you know, there are people that have said, oh, look, we've worked it out that uh, by some codes or whatever. Honestly, there's no way that any man on earth would know when the Lord's return is going to come back. Only he knows because everything is in his hand. So when you hear people say, oh, well, we have codes, we have certain things, and say, it's going to say that, uh, you know, Jesus is going to come back on the this spot. Only the Lord knows. No man on earth knows when he's coming back. No one. Because everything is in his hand. Times are in the Lord's hand. He knows that he's appointed times. He knows the appointed times when he's going to come through, as the book of Matthew says, that he's going to come through the cloud. He's a rider on the white horse. He knows that day. But we know the man of sin is an operation. You know, there have been certain ones over the years that said, oh, well, you know, um, worked it out with this number and that number. I think you and I'm not going to go into big names or whatever it might be. But you and I know that certain things, and we see how this person added up to certain numbers of the six, six, six numbers, and, and, and that. But we know that that this uh, man of sin, the son of perdition, he will try to make himself even greater than God. 
it will work, you hear like the working of that spirit of, um, of Satan, the one who goes masquerading around like an angel of the light, with, with uh, signs, wonders, and, and uh, sorry, power signs and, and lying wonders. And that's what's happening, the spirit of, of lying, a lying spirit. And as I mentioned, that we know Father, the Father of truth, truth, Jesus is the Father of truth, the way the truth and the life. But you have the enemy who's the father of life. You have the ancient of days. You have the ancient serpent. You have the lion of the tribe of Judah. You have the one who goes around like a roaring lion and trying to deceive many. So we see the spirit in operation. A revelation talks about this uh, false prophet. Let's go and look at uh, Revelation chapter 19. No, I'm going to finish very, very soon. 19, verse 20. It says this. A beast was captured and with the false prophet who had performed his signs on its behalf. With, with these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. And so it goes on. Revelation 13, 11. I'll give you some other scriptures and then I'll pray. It says, then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth and it had two horns like, like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. And what we what we're seeing right now is this this dragon spirit where it's coming out of. You know the nation of the place that's got this, this this dragon, yes. And it's China. When, I, when we picked up the Australian a couple of weeks away, it had the Australian map, it had the red dragon, the serpent, right around it, trying to crawl. And that's what we're seeing, this confrontation right in Australia, Australia and China, right now, right across the, the earth. This is this serpent, this is this dragon that's in operation, but we know who the true winner is. That's the ancient of days. We need to see those that have drifted fall back in love with Jesus. We love him because he first loved us. I like how Deborah was through her communion message. She said, shake your, shake your salt and shine your light. We need to just shake that salt. You know, when you were, praise God, I stopped using a lot of salt. I get that pepper and I give it a good shake. And uh, you know, when we at times you have used the salt, uh, give it that shake. But we need to spiritually shake the salt and shine that light of God's glory of His presence. So Lord, I, I, I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in your saying. Lord, bring us as the body of Christ that we will continually say and declare, Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Call us, Lord, to that great commission that you commanded, that you spoke of, Lord, in the book of Matthew, that we will see soul, soul, souls, one for your kingdom. And Lord, we ask and pray that there will be many that will come into your loving arms, running into your loving arms and receiving you, crying out to you in the hearts of repentance and restoration. And Lord, let it also be among our children and our grandchildren and grand-grandchildren. Let them come, Lord, and worship you. Let them praise you. Let them bow before you. Let them honor you and say how great thou art. Friends that we work with in our workplaces, help us, Lord, to bring the message of truth, to bring the message of salvation to those. And Lord, what a time around this when the language of, of uh, and, and songs that are sung around this time, what a great witness to be in there, Lord, speaking about you, Yeshua, bringing Christ back into everything. And so, Lord, we ask and just pray that 
souls, souls, souls. Today is the day of salvation. We declare it, we decree it. Not only through our families, not only through our friends that we work with, but Lord, people within the city that are lost, and let them find you. Let them make room in their hearts to receive you. Like that song, make room in your heart. Make room in your heart. So Lord, we thank you and praise you. Let us be your true light. Because we are children of the light. You are the light of the world. Lord, we ask and pray. The light now. That they will all come a harvest of souls into your kingdom before it's too late. Before it's too late. We thank you very much. We say, Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you.